guys, I found the secret way to make Amart upload more frequently. What you gotta do is that you gotta like, subscribe, watch his videos. Yeah, that's basically it. Hello, my fellow super fans of Daft Punk and their hit single, Walk Like an Egyptian. It's 1968, and you're some rich dad dude looking for a beach to spend time with your wife and children and ultimately settle on traveling across the world on a private jet to arrive at this extremely obscure spot by the Red Sea. Not only are you dabbing on the working class, but you're also intentionally remaining as far away as possible from every person in the region. I mean, according to that political commentator you unsettlingly cling to 24-7, everyone here is an inferior. <laughs> Over at the shoreline, after laughing at your kids claiming they found some crazy object that defies the laws of physics for three hours straight, you find this blue disc-shaped artifact that fits to your kids' description of what they found perfectly, before of course proceeding to scold them for not noticing the surroundings. You then happily sell it to the SCB Foundation for a million big ones. Come home. Get kicked in the balls by your wife for ordering her to be your personal sperm sink. You also happen to die immediately afterwards. All right, now who gives a shit about you? Let's have some fun piecing together this puzzling SCP-093. Right from the get-go, we need to testify that this disc is dangerously addicted to reflections. Like if it ain't held in anyone's hand, the damn thing Sonic spin dashes toward the closest mirror-like substance. And it doesn't give a shit if someone's furniture, someone's expensive ass PS5, or someone's precious little child is blocking the way. The disc is gonna accelerate around in a circle until it garners enough momentum to absolutely demolish right through whatever obstacle blocks its way. Cause it's just gotta get to that fancy freaking Mirror. Several containment tests were done to see if the disc is anything else physically interesting, but all they really found out was, well, you know, my Discord server bullies the living shit out of me every time I slightly act like a narcissist, so I genuinely wonder how they're gonna react when they get introduced to this theoretically catastrophic SCP contained with such minuscule effort just because it's too busy remaining face flat against it. Oh, and it'd be pretty stupid of me to miss mentioning the fact that this disc changes its color supposedly depending on the regrets carried by whoever is holding it or in the presence of it, according to an older version of the documentation. Wait, which one is it? Do I carry the bloody disc or do I stand near it? There's a clear difference between the two. Good riddance, I say. This color changing effect also seems to emotionally manipulate people into feeling a particular way. The documentation doesn't really go into depth deciphering this series of behavior despite having like over 50 years to figure it out. But thanks to a few incidents being recorded, we learned that when the disc turns blue, the people nearby get severely depressed sometimes at the point of offing themselves when the disc turns light violet. Well, I guess we only know about blue. The SCP Foundation just gonna rage quit their research the moment an anomaly reminds the researchers of their constant containment breach motivated decline in mental health they try so hard to ignore. This is so sad. Where's the tickle monster when we need him? Okay, now, for a while, everything I set up to this point about SCP-093 was pretty much all there was to know about it. Pretty boring compared to other anomalies if I do say so myself. Well... One final containment test was recorded and it goes a little something like this. Hey, buddy, a pal casually standing in front of a mirror carrying supreme cheese pizza numero noventa tres. Have you paid out for lunch, bitch? <laughs> You ordered a 60 piece chicken nicknugget. I'm not paying the bill. Don't give me that crap. It was your turn to pay for lunch and you forgot your fucking wallet. Yes, I'm not paying the bill. No, I was having a great day, a grand fucking day until you decided to take a shit on an ice square. If you don't pay that. Stop my dick. I'm not paying the bill. Oh yeah, SCP-093 tends to do that when you execute the place object on mirror maneuver instead of the let object roll to mirror one that the foundation's been doing for the past few decades. Okay, okay, let me finish my video. Let me finish. So now that we know the SCP Foundation relies on accidental discoveries to make up for its lack of critical thinking skills, as demonstrated by how it had multiple decades to get a blues clue why a mirror feel like disc refrains from moving on its own upon laying flat ways against a mirror or being held in a person's hand, we should look into these five different color tests. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to figure out the true power of friendship by the time this is done. What are the testing requirements? So, oh, let me just shove this list of materials in your face for five seconds. Congrats, you fully memorized the list and have the comprehension level of at least a kindergarten student. Okay, let's get going with the test before I collapse of unadulterated boredom. Blue, Blue test, test time, time everybody. everybody. Our first D-class to disregard the life of is a dude that tried to pull a Chris Benoit but did an epic fail at the end. He's definitely pissed at himself about we'll it. We'll call him D-Blue. Upon D-Blue phasing through the mirror with the help of the disc, he found himself in the middle of nowhere. Everything is heavily tinged in blue from the perspective of the control team, but the subject doesn't notice it. Keep that in mind because the difference between both parties' perspectives plays a major role throughout every test. After walking in a straight line for a while, Deep Blue conveniently comes across a 100 meter deep hole in the ground and is instructed to climb down it. When Deep Blue does so, with his bare hands of course, he walks down a passage and complains that something smells. Now what could the smell possibly be? Man, I think I figured it out! The hole is supposed to be a massive vagina- <laughs>
At the end of the passage, there's a concrete enclosure with six doors. The seventh door we're not counting is a complete mess and needs to shape up. Four of the doors are locked and or blocked. One door leads to an empty room with the walls covered in a thick brown substance. No, it is not actually shit. And one door leads to a room containing a couple precious pieces of the lore. That's right. This glorious treasure known as the lore is hidden within this Red Sea object alternate reality. And it is top priority to acquire the missing pieces of the lore and put them back together before someone else does. And quite likely marketing the lore on eBay so they could pay off the college debt. Do you want someone to pay off the college debt? Well, I say no. That law specifically belongs to the supreme leader of the SCP Foundation, King Solomon from the Bible. Okay, I'm having way too much fun with this. Time to move on. After acquiring a newspaper article written in a foreign language from the first stinky law room, getting randomly jump scared by the sound of an electric saw for three and a half seconds, completely ignoring that random dude sticking his head out the seventh door like some foreshadowing tool, and peeking into one of the block rooms only to find a disembodied hand on the ground, D. Blue was requested to return. He used the pulley system's rope this time to climb the hole, which is utterly pathetic how bad right? Finish the freaking exercise and climb up the same way you climbed down. Look, even the rope is trying to tell you to use your hands by drastically adding length to itself to get you to stop relying on it. This is, this, this is just so embarrassing. Wait a second, the rope is pulling him up, and the pulley system isn't causing it. Something's messing with the rope. Something probably powerful, something that probably knows what we're doing. Looking back at those rooms, there was probably a reason why they were so improbably scuffed. Looking back even further, there was probably a reason this crazy disc would teleport us to a world this absolutely improbable. Why was this disc discovered a day before the beginning of the Tet Offensive thousands of kilometers from Vietnam and the Red Sea? It also bewilders me that a document this complex would be among some of the most well-known SCPs more popular than the likes of The Old Man and all of the SCP number one proposals. What is this disc trying to tell us? What's going on in this mirror dimension that we need to be wary of? Upon Deep Blue getting atop the surface, he saw nothing out of the ordinary and walked back to the mirror. On his way back to the mirror, however, D Blue saw part of his cable going 90 degrees and- What? Whatever that was supposed to mean caused him to spin around in a circle, and the visual result of this decision was nothing. The control team saw something, though. They saw a large crowd of unidentifiable humanoids lacking the blue tinge that dominated this alternate reality. Everyone is sweating waterfalls over this unsettling turn of events. The cable of the subject followed eventually slacked before angling in a direction it shouldn't. D-Blue tried tugging at his end of the angled cable, but it didn't budge. The control room had to straighten the cable out themselves with the strength of the pulley system's reel. And even though they succeeded in doing so, the way it was realigned indicates that something was resisting it. Suddenly, D-Blue is screaming, firing shots directly above the cable as if something horrifying is there, yet whatever was there wasn't visible from the camcorder's Perspective. The footage streamed what looked like something out of Escape 3 glitch compilation before the camcorder and gun fell to the ground and the subject passed through the mirror. Or rather just his clothes, which were covered in a weird fluid that dried rather quickly. Hey, at least a portion of the law was recovered. Another successful day for the SCP Foundation, everybody. Let's ask the control staff monitoring the mirror if they want some of these Girl Scout cookies we got the other day. They're pretty good. Wait, what? They're all overwhelmingly traumatized because they saw the thing that D-Blue was shooting at? The control staff monitoring the mirror saw a humanoid monster 50 times the size of a human and other than the five gunshot wounds likely caused by the D-Class, it had zero facial features. The damn beast was using his proportionally scrawny arms to crawl directly toward the mirror. The SCP Foundation should consider themselves lucky because the mirror didn't take too long before returning to a reflection. Guys, 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 I have a really funny joke. That monster must be a YouTuber because it doesn't have any legs. Get it? No, it's actually a terrible joke, and I should be ashamed of even thinking about making a joke like that. You know, let's just end part one then.